It brings the time to seven minutes to eight. Now, we've been reporting throughout the morning concerns about Glasgow's readiness to play hope for the COP26 UN Climate Change Summit. Just five days to go before tens of thousands of delegates and activists join more than 100 world leaders by descending on the city. Equally, there have been concerns about what comes after. Fears the event could pour fuel on the flames of the pandemic and lead to a spike in coronavirus cases. Let's speak to Dr David Nabarro, who is the COVID-19 Special Envoy for the World Health Organisation. Good Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. Uh, this you? is I'm good, thank you. This is obviously a very important gathering, and you know we're yeah. hearing a lot from all kinds of people about the importance of COP26. But it does yeah. come in the midst of the pandemic. So, how concerned are you about such a large well, g gathering of people? I mean, I think we are all of us aware that having a large face-to-face -face gathering in the midst of a pandemic could lead to significant increases in numbers of people who are ill. But then it's necessary to understand the care that the uh, Scottish authorities are putting into managing uh, the event. And, and I must say, having reviewed the information that's come to me about how the event is going to be run and the way in which people are going to behave, the way in which it's going to be zoned, the testing protocols and so on, uh, I'm actually rather impressed. And, and we have had other global events that have been able to take place without provoking huge numbers of cases, such as the Olympics. Uh, and I think that it's the kind of precautions that have been put in place uh, are the right ones for getting on with life despite the threat posed by the virus. Th I'm concerned, but I'm reassured. How about that as an answer? Well, I suppose there are two sides to this, though, because obviously, as mm. you say, yes, there are mitigation measures that are being put in place yeah. for those who are officially attending the event. Yeah. But we're also told that tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people might well gather to protest as well. Um, yes. And albeit outdoors, but they might be less inclined, shall we say, to, you know, to follow all of the sort of social distancing and mask wearing that is being yeah. uh, advised elsewhere? Well, I, I, I hope they, they will take it seriously. These are people coming to focus on a global crisis, climate change. And uh, my understanding, having worked with people in climate events and other big events in recently, is that they're not uh, actually impervious to the argument that it's their job to demonstrate uh, responsibility uh, and indeed to practice masking and the kind of physical distancing that's necessary, even outdoors, to stop the spread. So I, although I'm concerned, yes, I'm concerned, big numbers coming together uh, is not a, a good recipe. I'm also uh, really reassured, Gary, by the general sense that people who are going to be pro even protesting are going to be responsible. And remember, the Scots have done and are doing remarkably well on COVID. Uh, and so I believe that the Scottish spirit uh, will shine through and, and everybody should, by the way, be talking about it everywhere in and around Glasgow saying Scotland's doing it, let's go on doing it and doing it with our friends who are coming in from abroad for this such important event. Well, I will ask about the COVID numbers in Scotland in just a second, but just in terms of, of those who are attending this event, uh, the Scottish yeah. Government have told us that uh, they've been quite upfront about the fact that not everybody attending will be double jabbed, for instance, because yeah. it, some people are coming from countries where that just may not be available to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that a concern? Because obviously what they're saying is they don't want to exclude anybody from yes. such an important gathering. Yeah, I think that that approach of non-exclusion is right. I've been involved in quite a few events. They're starting up around the world at the moment. And the protocols are obviously based around being vaccinated. But there's also provision for people who haven't been able to be vaccinated or who don't want to be vaccinated to have daily testing. And that seems to be a pretty good system. So provided it's one or the other and provided it's done with a smile and everybody's working together, then you can actually do quite a lot despite the threat of the virus without having great big spikes. I mean, I, I think we should we should very definitely be looking at this and saying it's been super well organised and we should do everything possible to support it uh, and make sure that particularly visitors coming from other parts of the world uh, are treated with a welcoming spirit because they're so important for the success of the conference. We're still seeing, and for the, about the past month now, we've been seeing a sort of regular daily figure in Scotland of about 2,500 yeah. infections a day. Things do seem to yeah. have been plateauing. Um, yeah. In England, we're seeing much higher numbers, um, slightly different mitigations in place. I, I mean, so. here, obviously, yeah. we've got still mask, mandatory mask wearing. Uh, yeah. We now have these so-called COVID passports for going 
going into large gatherings, etc. But even with those mitigations, as I say, things are plateauing. Do we need to do more in Scotland to bring the numbers down further ahead of the winter? Well, it will need more work, but I've got the figures in front of me here. And as you say, there's been a pretty marked reduction, uh, really, since uh, the beginning of September. And um, what I'm so pleased about is that mask wearing is something that not only is being advocated by the authorities, but people are doing it. And the physical distancing is also uh, being uh, pretty well uh, performed. What matters now is working out exactly where this virus is and then going in and doing detailed work in the parts of Scotland where transmission appears to be occurring to try to get it further down. It's not an easy job, and particularly the last bit, getting right down towards zero when you've still got ongoing transmission is a bit serious. Lastly, I would say, uh, please remember that for poorer people, all the things we asked them to do, like isolating and so on, can be much more difficult than for wealthier people. Poorer people can't often work from home. So let's remember to be specially careful about what this means for those uh, who are on low income. Just a brief final question to you. Yes. Figures from Public Health Scotland about booster jags. Uh, there's yes. a gap of over 104,000 people who have have be waited more than six months, are ready for their booster jabs, but haven't yet mm. received it. How important is it that this happens quickly ahead of winter? I think that it, it certainly needs to happen in the next weeks, but I'm not going to, myself at least, say it's got to be done immediately. That the, organising the logistics of vaccination, particularly for booster doses, is quite complex. And remember, our, the health services everywhere in Europe are, are really stretched right now. Health workers are in a, a, a super difficult situation. So I'm not sitting here very nervous about the fact there's a bit of a delay. Uh, what, what I am saying is that if you are offered a booster, please take it. It's, it's the right thing to do. Dr David Nabarro from the World Health Organisation, thank you.